In order to create stunning graphics for either your brand or for your client, standard forms like a triangle, a rectangle or a circle are often just not enough. In Canva, we have already a lot of forms available which go beyond these standard three. But in order to create unique shapes, we have to get a little bit more creative with the tools available. When we go over to the left hand side to the elements tab, we can see all the shapes available. You can either just click on the shape you want or you can take the shape and drag it to the place you actually want it to be. And there are three different ways how you can actually create unique shapes. The first one is to add one shape to another. And it's quite simple. You just take one form and just let it overlap so that you create the symbol you actually want to have. In this case, we created an hourglass. From this point onwards, you could select both elements and round the corners a little bit if you want to. Then you can select group, now you can move it around and use it as one element. But this way has one little flaw, and that is that it's not actually combining the shapes, but you're just overlapping the two different shapes. Let me show you what I mean. If I select both objects now, and I, for example, want to create a border which goes around the whole shape, you can pretty easily see what I mean by it has its flaws. Because it's not actually a compound shape, but rather two overlapping shapes, you would now apply this border to both elements and therefore separate them again visually. If that's the style you actually wanted, then that's perfectly fine. If you wanted to just go around the outline, you have to be a little bit creative here again. Let's ungroup these for a second and select the background element, which is beneath the foreground element. If we just now copy this element with Command Z, and then paste it with command V. We created a new duplicate, which now lives on top of both elements. Now let's go back to the border color and select no border for this element. We now have a shape available, which lays on top and has the same color as the background elements. If we now place the element to cover the top part, we can already see that we cut it off this outline here. If we now just scale down the object by actually clicking on one of the handles on the outside and hold down the option button on a Mac or the alt button on computer, we can now scale it down around the middle to actually only cover the parts that need to be covered. And now we have created an element which has the outline only around the whole shape. So by adding one shape to another and playing around with the elements using the same color, you can actually create custom shapes to your liking. The next method is subtracting one element from another. Let's say we want to create a moon shape now. And the way we do this is by actually subtracting one element from the other. And subtracting in parentheses because you're not actually subtracting one object from another because that's not possible in Canva. But you can play around with the colors to give the impression you're actually subtracting one element from another. Let me show you what I mean. So let's start duplicating the element by holding down the Option or the Alt key and just drag the element to the side. Now we pretty much added the one object to the other one, which is the same as in our previous step. The only difference now to subtract it is to use basically the background color. So if the background color, as in this case, is white, you need to select the element which lays on top of the other. Just select a white color and done you subtracted one element from the other. Let's scale it down a little bit and move it to the side because I want to have a more sharper moon. But keep in mind that you always have to use the background color because if you change the background color, for example, to a red, you can pretty easily see what's going on. But by changing the color of the overlaying object, we do have our moon back again. The third way is to create shapes out of intersecting elements. And by now you've pretty much got the idea how elements can be subtracted and added to one another by either using the same color of the object or the color of the background. Let's say you want to create an eye shape because you need it for your logo. First, I'm going to create a background shape, which is going to be the fill of our intersection. Let's make this black again and make the whole thing a little bit bigger so that we can see better what's going on. Now we start to add circles to it. And I don't want to have a fill here. I just want to have a border. Let's increase the weight here and actually change the color to white so that we can see what's going on. Let's increase the size of the circle by holding down the Alt button again to scale it proportionally from the, from the middle and then dragging it up. And you can probably already see where this is going. Now we can duplicate the element by holding down the Alt key and just dragging the circle down. 
Now we can select both circles and just drag them in the center. And now you can already see the intersection and the creation of the eye. We just have to get rid of the outer elements. And this can easily be done by just dragging in different shapes and just applying the background color to them. So let's create a square and transform it so that it covers everything you want to erase. Now let's select the background color, which is white in this example, and we are nearly done here. Let's duplicate the object by holding down the Alt or the Option key, and then drag it down to cover the lower part as well. Now we just have to clean up a little bit. And that's how you can create this custom eye shape in Canva. Keep in mind though, if you change your background color to, for example, red again, you will see what you have actually have done. But I'm going to show you a little trick in the end how you can actually use your custom elements without having all this clutter around it. So let's put all the techniques we've just learned to the test by creating a custom logo. And because my name is blank and my imaginary business has probably a B letter in there of some sort, I'm going to make a custom B logo. So let's start with adding one basic shape in there. This form here is going to be a good idea. I'm going to set the fill to no fill and then increase the border weight to around 20. Then I rotate the whole form by exactly 90 degrees. And this is going to be the top part of my B. I'm going to drag this up a little bit so that I have a little bit more space at the bottom. Now I'm going to duplicate the object by holding down the Alt or the Option key and dragging it down. And now you can already see that we've created this B shape already. But if you look closely, you can already see that the top form feels a little bit bigger than the bottom form, even though they are exactly alike. And if you look at a B letter specifically, you can always see that the bottom part of the B is always a little bit bigger to contrast that optical illusion. And since I'm going to make a creative logo, I can go wild as much as I like. Therefore, I'm going to make this a little bit too big. To create a more interesting dynamic between the two elements, I'm going to actually drag this towards the top. But now I have the same problem as before. Since both forms are outlines, I can see the bottom part of the top element here. But we already know how we can fix this by actually using an element with the background color. So let's go back to elements and select a rectangle, select white for the background color. And now you can already see that the new element is overlapping everything and I don't want that. So there are two ways to fix this. I can either right click on the foreground element and then go on layer and send it to the back or I can actually show the layers I'm using and then dragging it manually here. And now it's only going to cover the top part here, which is exactly what I want. Now let's select the white rectangle and cover everything up. That already looks quite nice. But now we have this huge white space at the bottom part. And I wanna adjust this a little bit by adding a second stroke to it. And the second stroke should origin from this line here. So let's duplicate the white rectangle we use as an eraser. And now we want to have it at the top part because I want to cover parts of the bottom element of the B. Now let's drag it into the position we want, just like that. And if you zoom in a little bit, you can already see that the form is not ending perfectly where it should be. And in order to make it perfect, and I would recommend you do make it perfect and take the time, it needs a little bit of trial and error to actually make this adjustment so that it looks perfect. Because in my case, now it looks fine here, but you can see that on the right hand side, we now have this little bump here. There we go, now it's good. So now we can extend the line how we want to. I'm going to do this by adding another rectangle, aligning it on the left hand side of the B and then transforming it from the right so that it matches the stroke of the B. Now let's change the color to black, rotate it by 90 degrees and place it in the middle. 
And that already looks quite nice. I just want to match the roundness of the B a little bit more with the rectangle we just added. And that is easily done by clicking on the border and then actually rounding the corners. Just like that. This is how you could create a custom logo in Canva. But this could also be used for any kind of icon or illustration you want to create in Canva. If you're happy now with the custom shape and you want to use it on a website, for example, you can download your current page, for example, as a PNG. If you have the pro version of Canva, you could actually increase the size and also select a transparent background. But if we download this now and open up the file, we can already see the same problem we had with changing the background colors to our custom shapes. The white shapes, which we used as an eraser, are still white shapes and therefore shown if we select a transparent background. The workaround and the trick to actually create a custom shape that you can use as a custom shape, for example, with a transparent background, is by exporting your image first in the highest possible quality and then use the image you've just created to place in Canva on a new canvas and then erase the background. And because we have worked with as much contrast as possible, it is easier for the program to actually remove the background. If you don't have the pro version of Canva, Adobe Express, for example, has a free vectorizer that would do the same job, but it's not quite as good. And if we download the image now with a transparent background, we can see that all the white shapes have disappeared and we have this one compound form that we can now use to our liking. And this is how easy you can create custom shapes in Canva by understanding layers and the placement of the elements and using and applying the right colors. If you have enjoyed the video and you thought the content was useful, please consider leaving a like or even subscribing. This helps out a lot. Thank you very much for watching the video and I see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.